Well, I, I'm just about Grayson Rodriguez. Did you get a closer look at him and seeing him? Just what strikes me so much about him is how damn big he is. Yeah. When you think of a guy who's got the body to be the big number one, yeah. boy, he sure fits a double. He sure does. Yeah, he definitely looks the part. Uh, it's a uh, it's a top of the rotation body and and. Uh, you know, it's an upper 90s fastball. He's really mature for his age. I've been really impressed with how mature he is. Uh, driven. He takes everything extremely seriously, but he likes to have fun as well. He's got the, you can see the camaraderie of the guys that came through the, have come through the organization, uh, guys he's played with. Uh, you know, he's a likable guy. Um, and I, I'm just really, really impressed with the work he's done so far in camp. And when you think of a guy like that too, who since he's probably 11 or 12 years old has been told he's the best damn thing in the world, that he, that doesn't seem to affect him. Talk on him, he's really grounded. How does that seem rare to you for that? Yeah, I just think he's, um, you know, mature and driven, and it, he's on a mission. It seems like, and um, he's got a lot of confidence. Sometimes we might have to pull him back a little bit because I think he's, you know, watching him just from the side, watching him. He's very hard on himself when he misses location or doesn't make the pitch that he wants to, but. Uh, I've just been, yeah, it's it's fun to watch somebody with that mentality that young. Brendan, you mentioned camaraderie, and from the start, you've had a roster that's split pretty quickly yeah. with a lot of guys coming and going. That camaraderie aspect of guys who play together, what difference does that make? For it, it makes it, oh, I'm sorry, it makes a huge difference. Um, you know, if you watch like our, when I was watching our mini camp guys or the minor league camp before we started, and you watch this group come through, um, it's, they're, they're, you know, they like each other. They're unbelievably competitive within each other um, and, and how they go about their day. Uh, you know, it's just, they're gonna win together. It just, it's, it really, really matters when you get to the big leagues, that, that uh, the culture that you wanna create in that uh, a clubhouse where everybody's pulling for each other. When guys are familiar, that it makes, uh, you know, it's, it's huge. And, and uh, I think we're starting to see that now a little bit where we're starting to graduate guys to the big leagues, guys that have played together. And that's just going to continue to grow as, as we get some of our, um, you know, our prospects to the big leagues. Kind of along those lines, and you've never given in to the fact that, you know, rebuild or whatever, you're out there to win every game. How much are you seeing from these guys in terms of belief and confidence? That you, yeah. That, that they, is that your role to kind of project that, or do you find that come natural from these guys? Well, I think it's, you know, it's part of the coaching staff's job, honestly, is to stay, is, I think we've done a really good job of staying positive in three t difficult years. Uh, you know, it's, we've, uh, I think we've come a long way in that way, but we are start. We're, we're getting younger. At the same time, our, like if you look at our camp right now, we're way more athletic, way more skilled, tooled up than we were in our previous few years here. And that's exciting, and that's exciting, and it's it's our job to really build on that confidence. To you know, this is going to be an extremely tough game. These guys get to the big leagues; it's not going to be easy. We play in the hardest division in baseball, etc. And it, you know, just to keep to keep a good morale has been difficult the last few years. But I think we've done as good a job as possible in keeping the guys feel good about themselves. So I think you see, look at our guys last year, guys like Hayes, Mullins, Mountcastle. You know, even though we struggled as a club, you see, start seeing guys putting up, young guys putting up. Um, good years, and the more guys we can have like that, the more you know, the more wins we're gonna we're gonna get. We talked about Adley yesterday. Has anything else popped up injury-wise during these few workouts? No, no, he's the only one. How appreciative are you of, of that? Yeah. Given the keep situation? my fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, I, I'm holding my breath. Everything we do out here right now, and that's not a great feeling. But it, yeah, I just so far so good. With just you, nineteen, with just nineteen games, how, how are you gonna? How are you going to apportion playing time with you know with the, with the so-called regulars? Are they going to make are they going to make road are they going to make road trips? Yeah. Uh, what you know who's going to you know who who yeah, do you see playing? I've talked to them about it. Road trips are pretty much out the window. We, we need to play, and so we don't have the uh, you know the full month. We only have a short sprint for games. I'm going to ease guys in at first, and then you're going to see the regulars. Hopefully, if everybody stays in good shape and, and we're healthy, um, play quite a bit, especially the last week to 10 days. You talked about guys graduating from the minors to the majors. Have you seen this last year or two, some of the guys who are in the majors graduate to that leadership spot that you want? You want? I mean, if, you know, up until tomorrow, you only have five guys here in camp that are 30 or older. No, trade, trade meets yeah. up tomorrow. But, um, so that's a young, young group. Yeah. Um, have you seen the internal guys meet that? 
this leadership spot? Well, one thing that we, you know, we, we haven't had veteran leadership really much in the clubhouse. It's really, really nice to, for you know, Torino's being here, um, somebody that's been through you know, playoff games, a lot of different experiences. You can see guys leaning on him already, but you're starting to see some of the guys that we've that come through and that have been here for a few years now taking a little bit different role. Um, Cedric's one. Austin Hayes is more vocal. I think Trey's becoming more comfortable in that in that role now. Uh, you know, Mount Castle is even different after only a year plus in the big leagues. You can see he's just walking around differently. There's confidence there, so that's you know that's nice. And all of a sudden you get you know 22 of those type of guys, then then um, you know, you're really getting somewhere. But I think we're just scratching the surface on building leadership within this club from the guys that are here just because we don't have a ton of experience. Um, and they're kind of going through these experiences together early on in their career. Um, but I think you do see, you start seeing some of our guys, you know, especially those guys in the top half of the order last year, there's more confidence there. Has Means picked up that mantle for the pitching staff? Yeah, yeah, he has. Yeah, I think, you know, we make an all-star team, you do what he, you know, what he's done, throw a no-hitter, things like that. Um, it opens guys' eyes to him, and I think that he, you know, if you listen to our pitchers' meetings, you know, Means he um, does contribute. Trey, you know, a year ago after coming back from cancer, he had the, he was healthy. What was he look like compared a year ago to what he's seen now? Does he look kind of the same or is he even more health or whatever, but he just, is it more himself? Well, or? He definitely feels better. Yeah. Um, you know, he, you can just tell you there's, there's a lot of, uh, he's got a ton of energy right now. He's ready to play. I talked to him about his playing time this morning. He can't wait to get out there. So he's like really excited and because I think he feels so good that, you know, it's fun to watch. Position-wise with him, first base and DH, with him, he and Ryan kind of start to He's going to play some outfield, too. He's going to play, play some outfield, yeah. Both corners. Okay. Why? What's the thought on that? Because I know you do have some outfielders as well. What's your just, Yeah, just because I think things happen throughout the season, and you never know where we're going to be short. And, um, you know, Ryan Malcastle does play first base also. And, and well, obviously, when we would want to get both those guys in the lineup at the same time and maybe utilize the DH in another spot for somebody else. Get Trey back in the outfield and get him some reps in both corners. Is Ryan going to play in the outfield? Not the start. Just, just to be clear on, on Trey, though, you're talking about for the regular season as well, not just spring? Or well, I'm going to see how spring goes. Okay, and then gotcha. we'll, yeah, gotcha. yeah, I want to get him reps out yeah. there for spring, Yeah, so I don't surprise him during the season. Well, with relief pitchers, are you going to treat them the same way you're going to treat position players? They're going to they're, they're going to start appearing in games right away. Pitchers is a little bit different because we're going to throw them out there when they're ready to throw the face hitters in, in, a games, in a game setting. Right now, they're, you know, a lot of our main guys are going through some live BPs. We had live BPs yesterday. We got live BPs again today. They're throwing, some of these guys are throwing the hitters for the first time. So I don't think it's fair to anybody to throw them out in a game situation setting. Um, it's not just your arm, but it's like reaction off the mound too. You want to get them in shape, make sure that some of these guys haven't been in spikes. So fielding a bunt, covering first, things like that, that, that can always make you nervous a little bit in spring training. Um, want to make sure they're game ready as much as possible. Tyler Wells and Jorge Lopez had some success as relievers last year, but late last season there's talk about what their role would be. Are they going to be relievers or are they going to be stretched out a little bit? I think camp? we're still, we're letting up, see how things shake out a little bit. I'm, I'm going to stretch both those guys out and then we'll figure out at the end of camp what we're going to do. Since we talked to you yesterday, you guys brought back Chris, Chris Ellis. Is he being looked at as a potential starter? Yeah, one of the kind of in that group is a guy that can give us multiple innings, um, stretch him out also, just like just like a starter, and then we'll, we'll see how it goes. We talked to Chris Owings yesterday. He said something he really liked here was Ryan and Matt working with them, refining his swing in the hitting lab. He said the first day he was here, he just was impressed by all the yeah. tech you guys had. Did he hear that? And to, to, for that to be a reason that he felt like he had a good one. Yeah, I think that the, it's really going well in the cage. And I think that our, the, no, both those guys have. They're, they're really good at, at, at building and creating relationships with our guys. You can see that already early on. I mean, it's not easy to do come first year hitting coach, not know a lot of players, there's two of them. And they have, I've been extremely pleased with, with what's going on from the, from the hitting side and how they're um, interacting with players. It's great feedback. I think the players are really happy. Brandon, you, you always get rankled when the tanky thing comes up because you guys are trying to win every game. Um, but it's obvious that in some, you know, some place that's happening and with the fire sales and all we've seen with the A's and the Reds and such. How tough is that to see and to know that that can be part of a rebuilding process? Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's hard. And, 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 you know, you're, 
we face really good clubs that have huge payrolls and, and um, it's not easy to do. And so right now we're still kind of somewhat early in the process. I think we're starting to get some guys there now and, and you know, we're just do the best we can with with um, the guys that are here right now. I mean, that's pretty much the focus is, is do the best job we can with the guys that are here and just try to continue to get better. Brandon, on, on Trey, unprompted, he mentioned to me a few times, he goes, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. These guys know the reality of their age and their contracts. Mm -hmm. Do you manage that guy to guy? And does it affect guys, do you think? I, I have seen it affect guys in the past. Uh, it, yeah, I think that I think that your you know, your job as a coach is is to is to build a relationship and to have the relationship where we can have open conversations and they can come in my office and talk to me about anything at any time. And um, I think that you know that's the reality of our sport and that's the reality of sports in general is is, is contracts and money and all that stuff that comes along with being a player and. And I'm very, very aware of that. And I think that is individual. Some guys might be more comfortable to talk to me about it than others. But that is something that, that um, is a part of it. And, you know, these guys are playing for the Baltimore Orioles. They're playing for the name on the back. They're playing to take care of their families for the rest of their lives. All these, there's a lot of different outside pressures that these guys have. And, and I'm very, very aware of that. And um, so I think that sometimes those type of things do can creep into performance or too much put too much pressure on yourself, and uh, it's not easy to do when you're in your mid twenties and have to handle that kind of stuff. So I think our guys have done a pretty good job with that, and just I just try to continue to help them.